tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight, we escape to a sunken city which lies with its fabulous treasure chests at the bottom of the sea and to the lust for gold of a crew of men who were willing to die or to kill. As Gildout tells it in his exciting tale, Port Royal, the story suggested by Lieutenant Harry Reesberg's book, I Dive for Treasure. Get anything else on that radio? I happen to like that particular number. Well, like it somewhere else. I just might do that. Oh, no, at Crystal, I didn't mean it. I I guess I'm just jumpy tonight. Here, come on, have a drink. Of that stuff? No, thanks. Well, pardon me, Lady Astorville. We're just fresh out of Napoleon brandy. Huh, aren't we just? Look, you got no beef coming. When I had it, you got it. The works. And when you didn't have it, you took it from me. Hucked the diamonds, sold the mink. Oh, you'll get them back. Something's got to turn up. It should be you, dead. Look, baby, don't do me no favors. The door's not locked, you know. I know. And I think I'm going to walk through it right now. Oh, now, wait wait a minute. It's a break for you, Danny. Now you can keep the room single rate. Where are you going? I think Benny can still find me a place in the line over at the Flamingo. You wouldn't. Just watch me. All right, go on. Kick a guy when he's down. Walk all over him. I should have known you was that kind of broad... You did. Oh, let her go, the tramp. He's like the rest of the crumb bums. When you're up, you're Danny Quinn, everybody's friend. When the horses don't run your way, you're nobody. Let her go. Hadn't always been like it was that night. And it would be different again. How soon, I wasn't sure when a fist landed on my door. A fist that was made from the hand that had jimmied some of the best windows in New York. Hey, Danny, it's car. It ain't locked. What's on your mind? Hi, Danny. Hey, Plenty. Uh, where's the broad? She took a powder. Permanent? Looks like. Oh, well, you're better off. Maybe. Hey, look, I uh, picked up something pretty good tonight, I think. I'm not in the market. Oh, now, look, Danny, this don't mean a thing to you till I get through talking. Now, listen to me, will you? Now, this could be worth anywhere to a couple of million bucks. Look, Carl, get off it. Whatever it is, get off of it. All right. Now, you probably never heard of a guy named Fletcher Travis, because you never get past the page with the race results. See what I mean? Me, I'm different. I case this town through the papers. I keep myself up on what's uh, going on in town and who's in town and how I can get to it. Now, look, this Travis made himself a lot of dough breaking in the sunken boat. You understand? He's what you call a deep-sea diver. Yeah. All right, you was a sailor once. You ought to know. Let me see that thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, I read up what he was up to, and then this afternoon I went to the place where he's giving a talk, see? Now, there's a sunken city down near Jamaica. The island, not the track. And uh, they call it uh, Port Royal. There's warehouses down there with gold by the ton. Travis was all ready with a boat to go down after it, leaving tomorrow. You believe all that? Well, sure I do. Anyway, he holds up this chart and says, this is the pass key to get him in, or something like that. So I tail him back to the hotel, I make his room number, and go in while he's eating his dinner. Well, he's got a lot of books there, history books. It's all true, Danny. I mean, kidding you. Now, this is a place for them old pirates. So, uh... Anyways, an earthquake or something spilled in, into the water. You understand what I mean? All in one piece, intact. And that stuff is there. Now, we got this chart. That's the key. What do we do, frame it? Look, you was in the Merchant Marine, wasn't you? So you head it up. Now, I got a fur shop staked out that'll get us the first money. Then we buy a boat, get ourselves a diver of our own, and we go after this haul ourselves. You know, you got something, Carl. Hey, behind you in the dresser, top drawer. See if my Siemens papers are there. Okay, Danny, okay. Uh, uh, where are they? I don't see them. Right in the back. Huh? There! Oh. You little jerk. Uh-huh. 
There's a difference between being a gambler and a second story man. I know what to do with that old chart if there was anything to it. But what I would do would be legal. I'd like Carl to wake up by himself and read the stories about his job in the late finals. They printed enough to make me pretty sure that the dope on this sunken city, Port Royal, was on the level. Millions. So after the police cleared out of his hotel, I went calling on Fletcher Travis. Who is it? My name's Danny Quinn, and I got something that belongs to you. Danny Quinn? Yeah, that's right. I was with some friends uh, slumming in the Bowery. I read about you in the papers, and mm. when I heard this guy talking about you and a chart he'd just stolen, I... Well, here it is. Well, well, come in. Well, I, I can hardly believe it. Well, this chart yeah, here is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard from this guy. It sounded pretty important. I caught up with the guy on the way out and roughed him up a little. Well, I... I don't know how to thank you. This chart Wait is... Wait a minute, uh... wait a minute. Look, it's easy to thank me. I want to cut in on this deal. I want to go with you on the trip. You go with us? Well, oh, sure. It's in the cards. I told you, I read about you in the papers. I was interested then. Now this happens like fate. I run into the chance to get this chart back to you. Look, I'm important to you. Very important. Well, I realize what I owe you, but a salvage Look, voyage I got the is answer right. to that one, too. I was in the Merchant Marine. I'm a real deep-water sailor. I can't swim. Now, uh, could you have made it without me, Travis? No. I guess I couldn't. <laughs> I was quite a feeling heading out into the big Atlantic swell. The rigging sang. The deck beneath me took an angle to port and it rose and fell for a, for a second my imagination took a turn. I got a, I got a picture of Danny Quinn standing on another deck, wearing earrings with a cutlass or two and a brace of pistols in his belt. Danny Quinn sailing out after a pirate treasure. <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea if we all got together tonight, gentlemen, since according to Captain Matson's estimate, we'll be over Port Royal early tomorrow morning. You're still holding to that, Captain? The barometer hasn't lied to me yet, Mr. Travis. It tells me this weather's holding. That means we should drop anchor an hour or maybe two after dawn. Good, good. Then it's time to look at the chart that Danny recovered for us. There. The city of Port Royal, submerged. After a geodetic survey made by the British Navy, 1826... Now, look here. See the sudden jump in fathoms along this line, right right here? Yeah, yeah I see. It's shallow here and deeper here. Yeah, that's right. It's a fault line that buckled when the city was destroyed by earthquake. This section sank and this section lifted. Now, see here? The point of reef, rock of coral that shows a wash during low water. Yeah. Well, I've oriented this chart with the old maps of Port Royal before its destruction. Now, that point of reef is no more than 90 feet from the edge of the warehouse section. That's right right out here. Are you sure of that? Well, as sure as I can be. What made me pick that night to go to the Bowery? You couldn't ask for a better landmark. Well, no, it's more than a landmark, Captain. It's a mooring. We get a bow hawser on the reef point, back off 90 feet, drop the stern hook, and we're anchored right over the front doors of those treasure houses, 30 fathoms down. <laughs> you've gambled for a living as many years as I have, you develop a set of nerves that do pretty much what you tell them. But when I realized what that old chart meant and how close we were to all that loot, my poker face flew right out the porthole. We made jokes about Fort Knox and the Vanderbilts. We slapped backs, had a round or two, and then we hit our bunks. But I'll lay you ten to one that all of us did our dreaming wide awake. I know I didn't. <laughs> Millions of dollars, 30 fathoms under our keel. We were like men in a daze when we set about our work the next morning, but it went the way it should. The point of reef was there at low water. The ship was secured to it, backed off and anchored. The lifting gear was rigged to the mainmast. The pump and compressor were checked a dozen times. Travis got into his heavy canvas suit. The helmet went over his head. Little afternoon, he began his first dive. I was on the intercom on deck. What's my depth now? Hold on, I'll get it. He wants his depth, Captain. Here comes 25 fathoms. Now. You're at 25 fathoms, Travis. Good. It'll be 
be safe to go down at this speed. No faster. The speed is okay, Captain. No faster. All right. How is it, Travis? Good. Conditions are good. There's enough light. Very blue light. No sign of any trouble. My air is adequate. No sign of any large fishes yet. Travis. Yes? What is it? Well, you make me nervous when you aren't talking. Keep saying things, will you? What do you see? I, I can't look down or turn my head. I see only what's in front of my faceplate. Well, I'm revolving slowly as I come down. Water's clear. All around me is that very blue light. Uh-oh. <laughs> few fish. Nothing large enough to be dangerous yet. The conditions are as good. What's my depth now? He wants his depth. It's 28 fathoms now. 28, Travis. Well, slow my descent. Slow it! Slow his descent. Right. I can see coral now. There's great formations of it stretching away from me. Buildings? The warehouses? Yes. Yes, buildings. Roofs, windows. There's a street. Yeah. Must be a street in front of me. And there's storehouses. He's hit it! Storehouses! We've hit it. Do you hear that, mate? Hey, I heard it. No, I'm on the bottom. I'm on the bottom. All right. It's sand. It's good footing. I'm moving forward. Yeah, I'll need plenty of slack in both my lines. You need slack. He's getting it. The winch is rolling. There's no trouble yet. I'm moving toward the nearest one. It's encrusted with coral. It's a building. A big one. And there's a wide opening. That lets enough light in. Hey, it's a storehouse. I need the loading platform. He wants a loading platform. What? The loading platform, you jerk! We were too busy on deck for a while to really digest what was happening. Even after the loading platform broke through the surface and we saw the single rotting chest on it, it was... Uh, it was too much like a scene in a B movie to believe. But then we pried it open. Lying in rows were small leather bags covered with a slimy coral crust. We took one out. It crumbled, and from it maybe 50 metal coins spilled onto the deck. They were dirty brown, but when they were scratched, bright, clean gold showed through. By the time Travis was aboard and out of his suit, the first shock of success had passed, and we were calm enough to have a drink. Well, Mr. Travis, sit down and rest. Uh, you are the hero of the day. <laughs> I got you here, but you lot on the go. Huh? Uh, Here's a drink, Travis. You've earned it. Uh, thanks. Uh, I can use it. <sighs> well, what do you think of your first day of salvage operation? Hmm? <laughs> Brother, I've won some pots in my day, but when those coins rolled out, that topped everything. Uh, I think we're off to a good start. How many more chests are down there? Oh, I don't know yet. I only moved 10 or 15 feet into the building. I saw three or four more. Yeah. What do you think they bring back in the States? Well, if they're all like this one, $35,000, $40,000 apiece. <laughs> yeah, we've hit it all right. How many trips down can you make? In this weather, two in the morning, two in the afternoon. That gives me about, uh, oh, 12 minutes on the bottom each descent. Thirty-five or 40000 a dive. Hey, that's going to add up. <laughs> now, don't spend it yet, Danny. It may turn into more than just going down and coming up. Things can happen down there. This is the first time I've worked buildings, and I know that sunken hulls can lie there for a couple of three centuries without moving, even in the current. To let a diver put his foot in the wrong plank and something on the other end of the ship gives way. You never know. So let's count what we got today and see if our luck holds tomorrow. <laughs> Our luck did hold, not only the next morning and afternoon, but the day after and the two days after that. One chest per dive, four dives per day. An average of $140,000 worth of loot a day came off the bottom. We had 560000 in the hold. I don't know, and the thought first nibbled at me. I tried to blame it on the idea that I didn't trust Captain Matson. But that wasn't it. Travis had planted it himself when he reminded me that you never knew what to expect 30 fathoms below. The rest of it was based on the fact that 
Any hunk of dough looks three times smaller when it's split three ways. In just a moment, we will return you to the second act of Escape. But first... This Saturday night, CBS's Gangbusters program brings you the case of the boiled booster. Uh, not rooster, booster. The case of the boiled booster. And since Gangbusters does only authentic police cases, who are we to question the title? Well, somebody did ask a question, and it's a case straight out of the New York City police files. And a house gets lost, among other things. Gangbusters is heard every Saturday on most of these same CBS stations. So be listening for the case of the boiled booster this Saturday. And now we return you to Escape. It went on like that day after day. Those chests coming up until, uh, until there was enough treasure aboard that schooner to drive any man half out of his head. We were isolated out there. The island, Jamaica, was just a blur off our bow. The only ships we saw were cruise liners way out on the horizon. The more I thought about it, the stronger my hunch got. The way my luck was running, I could work it out so there wouldn't have to be a three-way split of those chests. Travis was easy. He'd just stay down there. Captain Matson and McGraw, the mate, well, they took a little more thought. But with that fortune at stake, what else was there to think about? Danny. Hey, Danny, you deaf? Hey, Danny. Uh Oh, yeah, Skipper, what'll it be? You and your dreaming, Danny. Sometimes it's not so good to spend so much time in the future. Come on, give us a hand. Another chest is coming up. Another chest? You know this thing could go too far? Well, another day, another $140,000. Gentlemen, I think tomorrow's the last one. Yes, I was going to ask how long my food stores are running short. Well, I've had to move as far into that building as I want to move. And that roof I've been working under is heavy with coral growth, and it's not held by nails anymore. They're gone. It's held by balance, and I don't want to upset it. I don't blame you, Travis. Tell me, what do you say we got in the hold now? Well over 900,000. There haven't been many salvage operations that have topped that. Over 300,000 apiece, huh? Yeah, those are good wages. Why bother with another dive? Hey, Skipper, don't get so rich that you turn up your nose at a few hundred grand. Travis wants to give it another try, more power to him. That's up to him. Well, to be, to be honest with you, I've had enough of it. I'm going to be dreaming about those sagging walls and that blue light for weeks to come, and I hate to push my luck too far. Well, I'll make one more descent in the morning, and then I think we should start back. I think so, too. Danny? Well, you're the boss, Travis. That's good enough for me. <laughs> That was after evening chow. I stretched out in my cabin, but I didn't sleep. I lay awake planning. I was still awake when the mate came off watch. Hey, Danny. Yeah. Wake up, wake yeah. up. Come on, oh. come on. It's midnight. Yeah. Oh, oh, thanks, McGraw. You can turn in. Yeah. Yeah. Keys are on the table. There were three keys on that ring we anchor watches carried every night. One to the gear locker in case we needed tools. One to the lamp locker in case we needed a light. A third had been added when the treasure started to pile up. It opened the gun locker. Outside on the deck, I leaned my elbows on the rail, watched the phosphorescence rippling back from the side of the boat, and lined up the next detail. The gun locker had been equipped to take care of any possible attack, so it was an arsenal. What I needed was a Thompson submachine gun. But I wasn't about to overplay my hand by taking it out of the locker. Somebody would have noticed that. I just slipped in and unlocked the case so I could get it when the time came. I didn't think anybody'd notice that, and I was right. What's my depth now, Danny? Hold on. He wants his depth, Skipper. Here's 19, Fathom. Now. 19, Travis. Hey, look, my air is inadequate for the speed of my descent. Tell him to slow me down or increase my air pressure. Check. He says slow him down or give him some more air pressure, Skipper. We'll slow him down. You're slowing down, Travis. Thanks, Danny. I guess everybody topside is in as big a hurry as I am to get away from this place. Yeah, I guess so. You know, as long as I've been diving, I've 
never been able to control my imagination. After so many descents, I always start telling myself, Travis, that should be the last one. You've had no trouble. From now on, the law of averages working against you. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Yeah, the more easy descents I make, the less I want to make the next one. Oh, uh, yeah, my hair is adequate now. I'm, I'm getting plenty. I had a crazy well, flash thought that Travis before, knew what I was up to and had something up his sleeve. No, I got rid of it. He couldn't have known. If he had, he wouldn't have gone down. Hardly heard him talking. With him submerged, it was time for me to get into action. It was five steps to the door that would take me to the gun locker. With the Thompson, I'd force Matson. The rest of the fellas into their cabins. Then the chest would go into the lifeboat. On the stern anchor line we cut, the ship pulled into that reef point it was moored to, and the coral would rip the bottom out of it. The only thing left would be the lifeboat full of loot with me in it. I didn't see how any court any place could prove it wasn't an accident. I took the intercom set off my head. Matson and the mate had their heads together near the winch. Danny, where you going? Uh, in to get a drink of water. Don't do it, Danny. Stay where you are. Hey, 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 what? What the devil's the matter with you? What's a gun for? I haven't done anything. The gun is so you won't do anything. McGraw! I said, cut the winch. Time to move. Get below and open the valves. I'll take care of Danny. Oh, no, you won't, Danny. Come out on deck, Danny. Make it easy. If you play along, maybe you'll get out of this. You coming out, Danny? What's the game? The partnership was too big, Danny. I told you you'd dream too much. What? You and McGraw? Make it easy, Danny. Come on out or you go down with the ship anyway. Come on, maybe we deal you in. All right, Skipper. I'll play along with you. That's right, Danny. Use your head. Sure. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's what I'm doing! Using my head! Using my head! Using my head! Where are you, McGraw? I'm behind cover. Now listen to me. I want you to know that this was none of my idea. The captain made the plan and forced me into it. Now he's gone, I'll side in with you and Travis. Sure. Sure. Fortune like this has driven guys crazy before, but let you and me hang on to our senses. All the valves are open below decks. The ship's going down. Let's get the treasure into the life boat while we got time. All right, McGraw. Let me hear you toss your gun on the deck, and I'll know you're leveling with me. Sure, Danny. There it is. I'm in the main passageway. Come on. I, I swear I'm telling you the truth, Danny. He forced me into this. But you and Trap. Danny! Now, don't! I got plans of my own for this stuff, McGraw, and you aren't in them. Nobody is. Danny! You're going to die! Maybe he was right. Maybe that treasure was driving me crazy. It was like I was rushing downhill and couldn't stop, just like I didn't seem to be able to stop the time after I started screaming. After McGraw was gone, I went over to the main hold and tore the canvas off the hatch. I could hear the water rushing through the valve he'd opened and was telling me I'd have to hurry if I wanted to get those chests. I went over to the lifeboat hanging in his davits. No. No! 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 That's when my luck, my plans, my dreams, everything was blasted. The lifeboat, it was ripped and useless. I'd gone crazy with that submachine gun. It was peppered with bullet holes. One blasted, cut out one of the lines, and it crashed to the deck and smashed the bow. It wouldn't have stayed afloat empty. $900,000 aboard, and there was no way to save it. The schooner had already started a list. I had to think of saving myself. Travis. Travis, are you all right? I'm all right. There's been trouble up here. Yes, I know. Matson and McGraw tried to pirate the treasure. I managed to stop them. But they've scuttled the ship. He's taking water? Yeah. Yeah, how fast can you come up? You've been down there a little over 20 minutes. Raise me at regular speed, then. Never mind tending my lines. Get the winch moving, and then get below. See what can be done about stopping the water. Okay, Travis. I, I'll be glad to get you up here. We're in a mess, believe me.
I did what he told me. I went below. But it didn't take long to see there was nothing to do down there the way the water was pouring in. I spent my time working out a story for Travis that would save my hide and give me another chance at that treasure. It took 30 minutes to get him aboard and out of his suit. By that time, the schooner was starting to settle by the stern. There's no time to talk about it now, Danny. I can see you have plenty of trouble. Well, there wasn't much I could do but kill him. Naturally, Danny. All those chests going back to the bottom. How can you tell about guys like Maxon and McGraw? I don't know, Danny. Treasure hunting does strange things to people. Well, we're coming back after it, aren't we? I can raise some more dough. We aren't giving up, are we? I'm coming back, Danny. But you aren't. What's that supposed to mean? You left the intercom system open. I heard what you told McGraw before you killed him about your plans. That's too bad, Travis. Oh, no. Don't try it, Danny. Guns won't help you now. The lifeboat's gone. You're the sailor who can't swim, remember? You'd never make it by yourself, but I can get you ashore. And once I do, I've got to turn you in. So, you've got a choice. Come with me or stay with the ship. Your choice, Danny. Don't be too slow in deciding. I went with him. Hanging onto what was left of the lifeboat, we watched the rest of it from 50 yards away. Looked like the schooner just got tired of fighting the water. She lifted her bow like, like for a last look around and, and rolled over and went out of sight. $900,000. But that wasn't the only fortune that was sinking. Danny Quinn's was on the way down, too. I was fresh out of luck. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Tonight we have presented Port Royal by Gil Dowd, suggested by Lieutenant Harry Reesberg's book, I Dive for Treasure. Featured in the cast were Charles McGraw as Danny Quinn, John Daner as Fletcher Travis, and Bill Conrad as Captain Matson. Also heard were Dee Tatum, Paul Fries, and Ted DeCorsia. Special music was arranged and conducted by Del Castillo. Next week... You are imprisoned in a lonely lighthouse off the steaming jungle coastline of French Guiana. Your comrades... A maniac and a coward. Your captors, an army of gigantic, hunger-maddened rats. Next week, in response to many hundreds of requests, we will again present one of the most unforgettable and terrifying of all escape stories, Three Skeleton Key. Goodbye, then, until this same time next week, when once again we offer you... Escape! <laughs> Through field workers stationed with our troops in this country and across the world, the American Red Cross helps the lonely soldier, the Marine anxious about his sick wife at home, the sailor with a dying mother 3,000 miles away. Last year, more than three-quarters of a million men in service were helped in family, welfare, and recreational problems by American Red Cross workers. Give to the Red Cross workers. Give to the Red Cross generously this month. This is CBS, where you meet Gene Autry every Saturday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>